Welcome back to the Olduar Raid Guide. My name's Ciderhelm, I'm the administrator of Tankspot.com, and in this video I'll show you our yogg Saran strategy. If you'd like more information or would like to learn more about downloading this movie, click More Info on the Movie Information box on YouTube to head directly to Tankspot. There are two common strategies for dealing with Phase 1 of yogg Saran. The first involves having the raid handling ads entirely in the center of the room, with melee and ranged players dodging the circling clouds to avoid spawning extra ads. This is very easy to do with a 10-man group, but it requires much greater control in a 25-man raid, because the chance of a player unintentionally hitting a cloud, either by mind control or player error, increases exponentially. We chose to go with the second strategy, which is tanking guardians near the door and having two tanks ferrying them to Sarah when they were below 30%. Normally, I tanked all of the adds myself and stayed just outside the outer cloud so the other two tanks could taunt off of me. I moved the final guardian to the middle for DPS to finish it off, and one of the other tanks picked up the other additional adds during the phase transition to phase 2. Standing on cloud spawned additional guardians. We found that purposely spawning two additional guardians worked well for our three tank setup. The first ad would be DPS down and tanked by our first fairy tank, the second by our second fairy tank, and the third by me. By the time the first had been killed in the middle by our range group assigned to it, he was ready to taunt mine off of me as soon as it was ready. Doing this, I had to handle two ads at the beginning at one time, but had a very healthy threat lead by the time DPS got to mine so I could switch to the second with no problem. The reason we did this is because we wanted to reduce the time we spent in phase one as much as possible. Since adds come slower at the beginning, spawning two additional adds was possible with our DPS. Spending less time gave us a smaller window of time in which we needed to worry about tank mind controls. These few seconds saved proved to be the few seconds we needed to kill yogg Saran before his enrage on this particular pull. We made a few other technical adjustments to our Phase 1 strategy, including tightly controlled taunts to prevent diminishing returns from kicking in on our fairy tanks. This is discussed more in the related thread at Tankspot. Additionally, we used the Holy Paladin running Righteous Fury to help attract additional adds, and we also had Hunters alternating misdirects on distant spawns. Laura's 10-man video gives a good overview of what goes on inside Yogg-Saron's brain room during Phase 2. In the 25-man, there are 10 total portals. There are 3 to the left, 3 to the right, 3 in the back, and 1 in the front. We assigned melee DPS and hunters to specific portals so they would all be able to zone in immediately without having to find an empty portal. We also had a single healer, in this case a druid who could provide fairy fire once they reach the brain, assigned to the portal in the front. Though counterintuitive, the portal team is the most important factor in what goes on outside the portals. If the portal team can destroy all of the tentacles inside the brain room in under 20 seconds from the beginning of the Induced Madness cast, some corruptors and crushers will be unable to spawn. For this reason, we also assigned our portal takers to go to the tentacles relative to the direction where they entered the room. Our three DPS who took the left portals went directly to the left tentacles inside the visions. Our 3 DPS who took the right portals went to the right, and our 3 DPS who took the back portal went to the back. Having the DPS capable of handling visions in about 15 seconds also guaranteed we could bring yogg Saron down to 30% health in 3 portal phases. Not only did this prevent an overflow of crushers and corruptors, it served the same purpose of tightening our kill time so we'd have time to kill yogg Saron in phase 3. Portal takers also have to deal with constrictor spawns that often occur right when they need to take portals. For this reason, we have two paladins on either side of yogg Saron 
ready to provide a blessing of protection to melee who are constricted at the time portals become active. Both Hodir's Flash Freeze and your Paladin's Blessing of Protection can be cancelled with a Cancel Aura macro. While these abilities serve a powerful purpose in the encounter, breaking their effects quickly is important. During Phase 2, the Tentacle Group is focused on killing Crushers before worrying about Corruptors. Though Corruptors have significantly less health, they often required more travel time between them, and due to dying quickly, had less time to let Dots run their course. In addition, even just a few seconds of diminished power while two Crushers were active had a much greater impact on our DPS than the spells from Corruptors. However, we didn't ignore Corruptors. We had Shamans and one Protection Warrior dedicated to locking Corruptors down as much as possible. Over time, these would take enough DPS that they'd be easy kills for our ranged immediately after a nearby Crusher had been killed. We considered Curse of Doom and especially Apathy from Corruptors to be the most important spells to lock out. At times when Mimiron's casting speed debuff on them was not in effect, we would try to keep the Corruptors stunned. Since so much of our tentacle group was not dealing physical damage, I considered Thunderclap to be the most important debuff to provide on targets that would be DPS down. This is because the slowing debuff benefits the mages. In some cases, we would shift targets to DPS constrictors down, especially when they affected our feral druid who was tanking the crusher tentacle being DPS down. Mages can use ice blocks to break their own and, as stated earlier, paladins can use blessing of protection to break other players from constrictors. Since this is the third portal phase, I've now targeted yogg himself to watch DPS as we bring him to 30%. About 15 seconds before Induced Madness finishes casting, I call for DPS on the brain to stop immediately. This allows our range crew up top to clean up some remaining tentacles. The brain group immediately re-engages in the last few seconds to bring him into phase 3.